Hey y'all, I'm your host Damage, and welcome to another episode of Rewatch, a podcast where I binge your favorite shows as fast as I can. This week we are starting a brand new show and it is FX's Snowfall, like I told you guys a few weeks ago. Snowfall premiered on July 5th, 2017 and ended April 19th, 2023, comprising of 60 episodes over six seasons. Snowfall is described as an American crime drama television series created by the John Singleton, Eric Amadio, and and David Andron. The show is set in South Central LA between the years 1983 and 1990. The series revolves around the first crack epidemic. Yes, I say crack and its impact on the city and the stories of several characters whose lives are fated to intersect. 19-year-old drug dealer Franklin Saint, played by Damson Interest, Mexican luchador Gustavo Eloso Zapata, played by Sergio Perez Mencheta. Hopefully I said that right. Carter Hudson as CIA operative Teddy McDonald and Emily Rios as Lucia Villanueva, a Mexican crime boss's niece. Now, y'all, I started the show knowing absolutely nothing about it. And I legitimately mean like my knowledge went as far as a random meme every now and then on my Facebook. Y'all, this show is about drugs, drugs, like the, the hard drugs, like watching. I can definitely see where the show's like headed, I think. But we're also only on season one. And as always, there will be spoilers. And this show is rated MA for mature audiences. So there will obviously be adult content but i've seen the numbers and we all grow here okay so the pilot opens up in a neighborhood in south central with children playing outside and enjoying the nice california sun the kids distract the ice cream man so they could steal some of his candy and our main character franklin walks up and takes the candy back and returns it to the ice cream man later that night Franklin and his buddies attend a wrestling match to watch his favorite local wrestler, El Oso, fight. Oso loses that match and afterwards meets up with the Villanueva cousins, Pedro and Lucia. He is speaking to them about joining their cartel when Franklin interrupts them for an autograph. Later on, we're at a big fancy bougie house and we're introduced to Alejandro, who's having a small coke and bang bang party with a CIA guy and some chicks. And let's just say things quickly got out of hand because as the CIA dude was getting busy with the girls, he ODs and dies in a very very compromising position and you know what we all grown here so i'm just gonna tell it like it is y'all this man asked one of the girls to blow coke up his uh bum and then he od'd and that's literally all we get of that scene that was the end it cuts <laughs> so then alejandro gets in contact with another cia guy named teddy who takes over for the dead guy so he's his new liaison or whatever and while he's there alejandro shows teddy an entire hot tub full of coke and y'all know i love a good hot tub but uh that is not my idea of a good time meanwhile franklin's trying to hide the fact that he sells weed from his mom so he takes the bus with his friend Leon to the valley to go to a mansion to go sell his weed to a high school buddy Rob. Rob gives them a little tour of his house and it just so happens that his dad is working from home that day and by working from home I mean he's directing some adult films. Now the next time Franklin comes up there Rob and his girl are doing some coke and since they used up his parents stash he needs Franklin to go pick some up for him. Before going into the ginormous house he hears a gunshot and then when he gets to the backyard he sees a guard on the ground taking off a bulletproof vest and he exposes a massive bruise on his chest and then franklin meets the man in charge avi an israeli gangster and drug lord avi tells franklin that he doesn't sell little blow baggies he sells kilos and tries to kick franklin out but then franklin suggests to avi to fry him a kilo and he'll flip it avi is unsure about this so to convince him he's not full of it he puts on the bulletproof vest and tells Avi to shoot him. Avi shoots at Franklin to see if he flinch, and instead he shoots a bottle of champagne like probably like a foot away and Franklin doesn't move. After the show of bravery, Avi fronts him the kilo as long as he can bring him $12,000 in one day. He then hands him a little baggie of coke for Franklin to give to his buddy Rob. Franklin goes to his aunt and uncle's house where he tries to give his uncle Jerome the kilo because Jerome's the guy who he sells weed for. However, Jerome shuts him down quickly because he only messes with weed. 
strictly. He then asked Jerome if there's anybody he could sell the brick to for what it's worth at least. After no help from him, Franklin goes back home and he tries to figure out what to do with his big brick of cocaine. And there's a tap at his window. It's his Aunt Louie. She overheard him and Jerome talking earlier at his uncle's house. She asks Franklin if that's some real coke. And he looks over at it and it's as real as it gets. Now, remember Eloso and the Villanueva cousins? Well, they told him that if he wants to be a part of their uh, team, he has to do something for them. And that means he has to break into a house and steal some money. As soon as he bags up the money at the house, and closes everything up somebody is in there he hears him Oso, whose real name is gustavo by the way fights the guy and the fight ends up with the man being tossed over the banister and falling to his death back to franklin he follows his aunt louie to a place nearby and they enter a secret nightclub and meet the owner claudia apparently there's some history between claudia and louise so claudia pistol whips this girl like about like here like that claudia points a gun at franklin and tries to make him tell where you got the brick from but he refuses to answer because he ain't no snitch but then she points the gun at his aunt and franklin then tells her where he got it from about avi's deal and that he has to sell it for sixteen thousand dollars which is four grand more than what avi asked for claudia reluctantly agrees to the price after they leave lou suggests that he introduces claudia to avi so then he can get out of this while he's ahead but he says no so louis hands franklin her gun thinking he's obviously gonna need it you know we try to be a drug dealer and whatever but franklin turns it down as they are riding home they come across a homeless like encampment you know it's la they have those little like tent towns a little bit and he sees his father amongst these people and his his aunt Louie asks him if he wants to stop by and see his dad and he refuses and says, says drive the car he throws the more colorful language in there but my mom listens to this podcast so we will not do that all right now so the opener was kind of interesting but also just kind of all over the place and at some point it was just kind of really boring so it was kind of difficult to finish i think i literally cut like halfway off in between the episode and finished it the next day it was just not giving what i thought it was gonna give uh because y'all overhyped this show but it's only season one so so i'm gonna ease up on y'all like this show already makes me mad because we have a main character who is incredibly smart and charismatic young black man and all the boy wants to do is sell drugs and maybe like this just triggers me a little bit because i actually know people like this boys that never struggled in their life made good grades you know good families all that jazz and the kind of dudes that could have been on and did something with their lives but they just wanted to be a thug no reason and sell drugs for fun oh my god I, I just don't get it and maybe it's not for me to get like yes you want to make some money but money ain't everything uh what media say in that movie she said said selling dope gonna get you two places you're gonna go to jail you're gonna go to grave so that's that's what i'm gonna expect for franklin either franklin gonna go to jail or franklin gonna go to the grave and that, that's it but anyways for an opener it, it was it was kind of whack but i also can tell where the story is going because it's written very very well it's created by john singleton after all who's one of the greatest directors of black cinema ever so this is simply just wasn't gonna fail anyway so yeah like i love how we get the stories within the greater storyline like we're just kind of waiting to see how they overlap and it it does that in season and it does it pretty well uh it's been a long time since i've done the actual format i can kind of barely remember what it is okay uh best character y'all there ain't gonna be no best character they're all trash you mean to tell me y'all want me to root for a bunch of drug dealers get out of here and no i'm not rooting for the police either because you know they're barely here and the police in this situation is the united states government represented by the cia and we don't bother with that season one as a whole moves pretty slow almost like it expected multiple seasons to wrap up everything which is low-key rare these days i feel like shows nowadays are always on the chopping block so they're always either a cliffhanger or they wrap everything up nice just in case okay moving along oh my least favorite character this is a tough one hands down down pedro and here's why there's literally an arc of him just being the grimiest human i've ever seen like i truly don't think we get a single redemption story for him he literally sets up oso to rob his father and then after he accidentally kills the guy he wanted to throw him under the bus and then after that when they decide to set up a random security guy and murder him he froze and almost let his cousin get strangled to death by the guy and then this dude snitched to his daddy about the whole 
thing after he got annoyed that Oso and Lucia were hooking up. Like, this ain't about you no more, bro. Like, relax. So his dad threatens to kill Oso and shuts Lucia out of the plans, which were originally her idea. He's, uh, he's just garbo all over. All right, time for some good. I did struggle to pick out my favorite episode of the season simply because it was just such a slow burn that most of the episodes were pretty even killed. So there weren't many that were significantly better than the one before. So as usual, the best episode I would have to say is going to be episode 10. But before we get there, there's an honorable mention story that I thought was pretty cool. In episode 7, Franklin and his buddies go out of town and he discovers crack and decides to bring it to LA. Now the way he finds the crack seemed really significant to me because he was just going up there to sell the coke and get rid of what he had. When he leaves the place to clear his mind, he realizes that he's walked to a familiar place that he's been to before and it was the old Black Panther office that his dad took him to as like a child and inside this old office he finds a young white woman. This woman leads him to the crack. Now, maybe I'm just talking about him, but, but I feel like this is such a significant setting. In a place formerly used as an empowerment for black people, he finds the very thing that we know destroys many black communities. And it's literally brought to him by a white woman. And I wonder if that was done on purpose because that's the way I saw it, but it could have just been an actor choice. Okay. Now let's just get into episode 10. Episode 10 is called The Rubicon. I feel like the name is incredibly appropriate because so many characters go so far past the line that there is just kind of no coming back. So crack has been introduced to LA. They gave it away for free and now it's selling like hotcakes. So Jerome wants a higher percentage of the sale. He and Franklin haggle it out and he settles on his cut being 25%. So in some previous episodes, it was discovered that Alejandro actually killed the two girls that were at that party from that very first episode. And one of the girls, BFFs, was looking for her. He has found her before she could find him and he kills her too because she's getting too close. Now Alejandro is getting her body ready for disposal and by that I mean you know chopping her up. Teddy walks in and y'all remember that deep down Teddy is still a cop at the end of the day even if he is infecting the United States with drugs. Uh, so Teddy feels that he can't let Alejandro get away with what he did so he shoots him in the back. So now he has to dispose of two dead bodies. At the Vienna Waver house they're having a funeral for Luis's dad. He died of cancer by the way and her uncle comes to let her know that her little cousin Antonio who just graduated will be the one running the numbers for the cocaine business effectively removing her from a position that she created in the first place. Franklin finds his mother in tears because she got fired from her job and Franklin tells her that maybe it's a good thing and maybe she'll be able to move on to bigger and better things but she doesn't feel the same way because now she has no way to cover any bills. Franklin tells his mom that she doesn't have to worry about that anymore and hands her a stack of cash. She throws the money and tells Franklin that she would never accept any drug money from him and walks away. Franklin packs his things and he leaves after that. Now that he and Jerome are partners, he takes him on a trip to buy from Avi. They are supposed to be buying two keys like usual for 12k each, but Jerome wants to haggle with Avi and Avi thinks they're trying to strong arm him so he ups the price to 13 a key out of spite. After they leave Franklin is upset with his uncle but then Jerome suggests that they just cut Avi out of the way anyway and buy from the source directly and get a cheaper price. So early in the season Franklin's bestie Leon got shot. And the story behind that is that after Franklin leaves the club these two guys Lenny and Ray Ray jump him and take the cash that he just made from him and to get the money back they enlisted the help of this random dude Carvel yeah <laughs> like the ice cream shop they tortured Lenny for the location but it wasn't until after Carvel sexually assaulted him that he told him where the money is and then after that Carvel went and spent all of Franklin's money and eventually they found him tied him up and put him in the trunk and drove him out to the desert and shot him now Franklin didn't do the shooting Leon did, of course. Now, obviously, Lenny is still pretty messed up about what happened to him. So, as a revenge, he shoots Leon nearly to death, but he survived. But he is obsessed, so Franklin arranges a sit down with his friend Ray Ray to discuss how to handle it. How you ask? Well, here's the answer Franklin and his uncle Jerome are at an oil field waiting for Ray Ray, and he pulls up in Lenny's car. Franklin tells Ray Ray that he wants to see Lenny and Jerome walks over to the car 
as Ray Ray's open in the trunk while Franklin's waiting on the other side. And Jerome and Ray Ray pull Lenny up out of the car, who's tied up, and tosses him in front of Franklin. Jerome holds up Lenny's head, and Lenny calls Ray Ray a Judas. Ray Ray then asks if they're good now, since, you know, he did what he asked. Franklin tells him, not just yet. He tells Ray Ray that he needs to know word of this little situation is never going to get out and pulls out a switchblade. Y'all, I didn't see this part coming at all. Franklin wants Ray Ray to kill his best friend. He refuses because, duh. Then Franklin gives Ray Ray an ultimatum. Either he kills Lenny or both of them die right then and there. And he tosses the blade at his feet. It was getting intense. Ray Ray then says that wasn't part of the deal. And Franklin telling him that it's part of the deal now and gives him a wad of cash and offering a possible future for him. Ray Ray then picks up the knife as Lenny begs and begs him not to do it. Ray Ray tearfully tells Lenny that he told him to let it go and walks over towards him. Jerome exposes Lenny's neck. Franklin puts a gun to Ray Ray's head and orders him to go through with it. Ray Ray hesitates but eventually slits Lenny's throat. After Lenny dies, Franklin tells Ray Ray that if he ever needs to make some money, he knows where to find him. And Franklin and Jerome ride off, leaving Ray Ray to deal with his dead buddy. Like, that was so intense. And it wasn't even the last thing to happen in the episode. The next day, Franklin is at Jerome's place and is just hanging out with his uncle and Leon while Kevin is just talking business with some other dudes. Franklin sees the ice cream truck pull up and the kids running toward the truck. Franklin hops up and walks over there too. As the driver asks if the kids have any money, none of them say that they do, like always, and he gets ready to leave until Franklin approaches the driver and states he should never stop in this neighborhood without serving the kids there and even offers him a lot of money. The driver agrees and starts serving the kids. In my opinion, this should have been the final scene of the episode. It would have been like bookends to what happened in the pilot, like where they, you know, couldn't afford the candy and so they stole it. But this time Franklin's like paying for it. Like that would have been a cute little like bookend or whatever. But I feel like it wasn't to let us know that this ain't that type of show. This isn't Franklin's end goal. It's not a happy ending show. That's not the goal here, you know? It's just a tiny smudge of what Franklin's trying to do because we don't really see what his like true motivation is for doing this. We don't really see like he doesn't want expensive clothes or cars or shoes or whatever. We don't really see what he's after. And I guess this is one way that's like he's not after a thriving community either. <laughs> but that's that's just the way I take it, you know, my interpretation. And if you're asking why aren't I talking about Teddy's story a lot? And that's because it's boring. It gives me nothing but anger. Teddy is literally working with the CIA to smuggle in cocaine into black and brown communities just to fund a war. Like what? Ugh, I, I, don't, I don't even want to talk about it. It makes me so mad. Anyways, at Lucia's dad's funeral, Pedro approaches her and tries to apologize for everything. He says that he just wants to be a family again. He's drunk, so Lucia calls for her driver to get him home. Pedro hugs her and he takes off. Lucia then approaches her uncle and tells him that she'll get a hold of her cousin the next day and go over the books with him, basically showing that she's fine with everything. Her uncle, Ramiro, is reluctant to believe her. As Lucia goes back into the house, Oso and the Los Monarcas gang wait on her call on a payphone she gives them her location at the villa she gives them her uncle's location at the villa because it's all a setup gustavo walks into the villa and tells romero that he's unarmed and offers his condolences romero then gives gustavo a chance to leave immediately and threatens to kill him should he ever come near them again Oso then asks to see lucia to say goodbye and promises him that he'll never have to see him again romero says yeah that's fine and lets him in gustavo goes in the house and lucia is waiting for him seconds later they hear gunshots outside and when they exit there's a ton of of men wounded or dead including ramiro who dies in front of her the season ends with franklin enjoying his new cookhouse that's where they make the crap as well as his aunt louie who is running the stove while kevin and leon are bagging up the rock his mother sissy is at home by herself all alone now that franklin's out of the house franklin and jerome are counting the money from the success of the crack deals and franklin has solidified his future as South Central's newest drug kingpin, as a soul perversion, a California dreamin' plays over it. This episode was really intense. Like, it, it was a lot going on. I feel like they kind of 
shoved a lot into this last episode, which I guess, you know, they do that for all season finales, but I feel like they did it well because it piled on, but I feel like I would have liked it more if we would have gotten a, and here's how all of these storylines end up together. Like we got a little bit of crossover, but not enough for me to miss it or want to keep watching, but obviously I will because this is a binge watching podcast and we finish everything we watch here. We do not give up, but Anyway, speaking of giving up, that is the end of this episode. Um, we are going to pick up next week with season two of the Snowfall. So if you want to binge that, it's only ten episodes. You know what? What's ten hours of your life? Just just take a break, like me. It's fine. Um, but yeah, shout out to the YouTube people again. Thank you for keeping our listens up over there. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share on everything. Um, you can leave me voice messages apparently on the Spotify, so you should do that if you want to. Just make sure you're interacting, share because even if you're not like super into this show, maybe someone you know is, and that's how we find more friends and how we stay more connected. So, um, anyway, guys, thank you. Make sure you follow us on our new Facebook. I'm trying to get us some traffic over there, and I'm kind of liking what we're doing. All right, thank you. I'll see you guys next week. Back to binging. Try and catch me.